Hey guys, Shane here, Figure Day 3D Printing. We've got lots of questions from Patreon. Mail came in. Got some other little parts here, so let's get started. All right, so I actually didn't ask Patreons this week on what they wanted to hear because I had so many questions from last week that came in too late after I'd already recorded the vlog. So I'm gonna get through those questions first and then I will go into mail and a couple other things. All right, so again, I'll put up the questions right here so you guys can read along with me. So the first one was from Shay and he asked about the BL Touch and then he said, I'd like to hear your take on stepper drivers. Also, how I manage multiple machines in your slicer. Okay, so as most of you know, I use Simplify 3D pretty much exclusively with all of my 3D printing. So in, in Simplify 3D, when you go to edit process, at the top, you're gonna have a profile and you can drop that down. The, each one of those profiles is one of my printers. I'll put a screenshot up here so you can see what I'm talking about. And that way I have, I can just select my printer, hit okay, it'll reach, change my bed, resize the bed, shrink it, make it smaller, make it circular for the delta, whatever it is that I'm working on, it rechanges, it changes up my bed and all the settings inside of there. Then underneath that, I can select which filament type I wanna use. And for, I print most of the filaments, especially all the exotics on the FT5. So that one has the largest amount of filament types on it. I've done most of the maker boxes uh, filaments on that, but I've also done quite a few on the GTEC. I just haven't saved them in that. I usually just do it and then don't save them. That's kind of bad practice on my part, but that's how it is, but anyways, you can add multiple profiles for each type of printer. You just call them, you know, DeForce Mini 1, DeForce Mini 2, FD51, FD52, whatever it is you want to call them. And that way, because you could change things that don't actually change with the filaments. And for fear of being quoted incorrectly, I'm not going to say exactly what they are because I don't know. I do know that speed is one of the ones that doesn't always change properly when you're changing filament types. It could be just because some of my profiles, I, I usually just end up doing it myself because I remember most of the settings for each of the filaments that I use because I use them so often. So that's probably one of my downfalls into that. But again, you can have multiple profiles inside Simplify 3D. Now what you can do in Cura or Slicer or Craftware, anything like that, I don't know. I don't use those so I can't say exactly what those ones, like how to do that. I set it up every time I go in there and work on it. But again, with Simplify 3D, that's how you set up multiple printers inside Simplify 3D. And that's how I manage all of my slicing profiles and everything like that. Okay, and talking about stepper drivers. Now I'm probably, if someone doesn't already have a stepper video out there, I will put one out there for you just as a quick overview of different type of steppers. Okay, so the first one I'll talk about here is the A4988 stepper driver. And this is the most common that comes in any 3D printer out there. Probably all of them actually probably come with this unless they're doing like 32 steps. The max these can do are 16 steps. And uh, what steps are is a totally different conversation. I'm not gonna go into that right now. But just to kind of just outline the different drivers to you. This is the most common one. These are one to $2 a piece. You probably could find them cheaper on like AliExpress if you buy five or 10 at a time, or even 50, I'd say. These are the most reliable, in my opinion, but they also have the most failures, simply because they are such a cheaply manufactured piece. You know, this little PCB board with a couple circuits on it is not much. So these will blow out, but you're not gonna have a lot of misstepped issues or anything like that. Uh, with these if you tune them properly. So most common, very cheap, and very reliable. The next one I don't have because I'm not a huge fan of them from what I've read, I've never tested them though, is the DRV8825. And I'll put a picture up here so you guys can see it. And this one is a common upgrade that a lot of people look into for 32 steps when upgrading your printer. Now the issues with the DRV8825s is you will have missing steps. That is a very, very common problem. I'm not sure if it's the way they're made, if it's how hard people are pushing them, if it's because of heat. I just don't know because I've never tested them and there are so many, so many threads out there on the internet about the difference between the uh, 4988s and the 8825s. So feel free to give that a quick Google search and search between the two of them. So again, that is the upgrade to the to this first one, which is the, I keep forgetting the numbers, 4988. And the next one I'm gonna talk about is the TMC2100. 
Now, I actually got that in the mail today, so I will pop that out now. The TMC 2100 is, I think, a better upgrade solution than the DRV 8825s, simply because I can't rip this open. Okay, I feel these are a better upgrade than the 8825s because these are much more reliable. You can get these from several different vendors. You can get it direct from the actual manufacturer, which I can't quote the name right now because it's blanking on me. These ones I got from Big Tree Tech on Amazon. They were a good price. And I like these because on the ones direct from the, the creator, the maker, the manufacturer, the potentiometer is on the bottom of the driver. So if you're running a MKS or ramps board, that's an issue because you have to adjust it and then put it back on, adjust it, put it back on. And that can be annoying. But if you have the potential on the top, you can do it while it's live. And that makes life so much easier so that you can troubleshoot faster. Now, if you're doing smoothie, you're gonna be wanting to use these, but in smoothie, you can set your V-refs in the actual firmware so you don't have to worry about where the potentiometer is. And on the bottom of these is where the main chip is. Don't ask me the name of it because I don't know. I just know that's the main chip. And that is where your heatsink would go on to. So you do have to be a little more careful on your cooling on these simply because they are not getting the same amount of cooling that you're providing the 4988s because the chip is on top, potentiometer is on top. So you put the heatsink on the chip here and it cools because a fan is probably in the vicinity or it's exposed from the board. It's not captured underneath of it. So that is something to really to think about is make sure that you have proper cooling for a chip like this. Because if you don't, it will overheat with long prints or extremely fast, hardworking prints. So the reason why I like these is because you can run these in two very unique modes. So the first one being spread cycle and the second one being stealth chop. Let's talk about stealth chop first. This basically makes your 3D printer absolutely silent. And you're mainly going to want to use these on your X and Y axis because the Z moves so slow. It's not really going to give any difference to and you're not going to run this on your extruder. But I guess you could, but I haven't seen too many people run it on their extruder, just to say. Anyways, with the stealth chop, it runs it very, very slow, or it runs it very, very quietly, I'm sorry, but you're going to lose steps, and you would have to run the printer slower to decrease the chance of a missed step. So you could have a silent printer, but a slow printing one. Now, spread cycle is the one that most people use for 3D printing because it's going to give you a good balance. So it's gonna be very reliable, and it's going to quiet down your printer. So that's why I got these. I wanted to make the FT5 quiet because it is super loud and it vibrates like a maniac when I'm printing uh, fast prints and large prints on it. So I'm trying to quiet that down. I'm actually working on a video of just making the FT5 as silent as possible without losing any of the quality or increasing quality if I can, but without losing any product quality out of it, I wanna make it as quiet as I can and less disruptive to the environment. And I've started that way with these yellow balls that I had a few vlogs ago. Actually, you can see they're installed on here. The new feet are on there. That's helping out a ton. Next step is these, and then to finish, uh, get the plexiglass at the front of my printer and to fully enclose the front of it. I haven't got the plexiglass yet for the windows. But anyways, that is the three most common types of stepper drivers you're going to use in your 3D printer. Okay, so next question here is from Richard, and he's asking about the different connectors that are commonly used in a 3D printer. It's gonna be hard to zoom in on those, so I'm gonna throw up pictures of them, and I'm gonna talk about a few different ones here. I'm probably going to do, again, a separate video just on this because this is an excellent uh, resource for anyone that's looking to get in 3D printing and looking at different connectors. So the first one we're gonna talk about is the most common that's on any 3D printer is the JST connectors. So these are mainly used on the actual stepper motors and connecting to the MKS or ramps board, depending on what you have, it can be different. But for the MKS board, there are gonna be a lot of JST connectors on there. The next most common is a DuPont connector. Now there are two types of DuPonts. One is a locking type, one is a non-locking type. I prefer the non-locking type because the locking type are annoying and they're so small and I have, I don't have huge fingers, but they're big enough and it's just hard to get in there. I'm not a fan of them. You're gonna use these a lot on ramps boards simply because a lot of them don't have the JST lock-in sections. Not all of them, but it really varies on what you have. But again, 
Those are two very, very common types. Another type you're gonna want to look into is maybe an XT30 or XT60 connector. If you're building your own or wanna to upgrade to a more heavy duty connector for things like your hot end, and or heated bed. These can handle a much, much higher amperage and these are used a lot in drones because they're quadcopters, especially uh, racing quadcopters because they're pushing so much juice through the battery into that quad to make it go as fast as they can. They wanna have a really good uh, performance of a plug and they wanted to make sure that it's very secure. And I use the X-T60 on the FT5 for the hot end and I'm actually using it actually on every printer that I have upgraded it to an E3D is using an XT60 connector simply because I want it to be a nice strong connection and I don't want that coming apart. So another connector that you're not gonna be using on your wires per se, it's gonna be on your board. I usually call them Phoenix connectors. Uh, they are the big green plugs that plug into the board. They're called Phoenix connectors in electronics that I use at work, but um, I'm gonna call them that for this. The FT5 actually uses a male and female to bridge the dual motors together into one set of leads to go into the board. These are also gonna be on like a ramps board. You have a four pin that plugs in, that is your main power. These are not really, these don't really have a high amperage rating. So I really don't like them being on ramps boards because people burn them out daily. I mean, if I could count all the different posts every single day of people posting of burnt boards, the number, I mean, would be at least five to 10, I'd say per day that I see in various groups and forms that I follow of people with burnt boards. So those Phoenix connectors are, again, they just kind of, you tighten down, they, the female connector is on the board, the male connector is off, you tighten your cables onto it and it plugs into it. The next type is just on the board and they are turn downs. They might have an actual term out there. If there is one, let me know, I'd love to know it, but I just know them as turn downs and they are simply a flathead screw that pushes down onto a piece of metal to sandwich your, your wire down. So your wire goes in, you screw it down, it forces this down and, and it squeezes that piece. There are, no, there are no teeth or anything on it. It's not uh, ridged at all. So it is just pure friction holding that wire in. And that should be enough unless you're like throwing, you know, swinging your printer around by the power cord or anything else. But these are super common. They're only gonna be at every board out there pretty much. And they are really for fans, heated bed, extruders, uh, some thermistors, it, that really is kind of depends, but it's mainly for those uh, more of the 12 volt power or 24 volt power, depending on your flavor for those type of connections. So there could be a few more connectors out there, but for me, those are the most common ones that I see and experience on my 3D printers. If you guys have any other ones, uh, if you do have more you'd like me to include on a video, then please let me know and I can try and round them all up and get them out there into one you know, comprehensive video for everyone to view. All right, let's take out mail now. So obviously right here on top is the maker box. So this is the February maker box and I'm going to try and get this out soon. I know it's March, uh, but again, it takes me a while to get mail. And sadly, this takes almost three weeks to come to me after it's shipped. So hopefully I can get this done in the next week or so and get this out to you guys. The next thing here are some Quantum V2 Pros. This is not 3D printing related whatsoever. These are actually for FPV drone racing. I'm not gonna say racing because I can't really race where I'm at, but I am buying and making my own, I don't, I don't think mini whoop is the proper term for it, but a micro quad with the camera that I'm building, not on my own, but I'm modding one in order to be able to do FPV because I wanna learn it. And I'm learning it for under $100. I'm gonna do a video on that because I've seen other videos on it. So I'm kind of taking bits and pieces from all these other videos that I've seen and I'm gonna put them all together to make one video about this. I am super excited to get into the FPV with drones, but this is actually a DIY kit. And I wanted this because of its price. This was 70% off on Hobby King with free shipping. I could not not buy it. Um, and I actually picked up two. I'm probably gonna end up give one away eventually. Uh, I'm going to mod one and do it and do that video. And this will be in the coming months. And the second one, unless I screw up my first one, I really bought it as a secondary in case I screw up cutting this one because they're supposed to be good with glasses, but I wanted to make it so I could uh, modify it to fit my glasses for me perfectly. If I screw up the first one, I have the second one that cost me 25 bucks and that's why I bought two of them. So if I don't mess up the first one, I will give the second one away and we'll go from there. But there's so many mods I already have in mind for this, um, but this is just the actual goggles themselves. I'm gonna be adding a DVR feature so that I can record 
the the flights that I'm doing. I probably post them here on YouTube, at, you know, kind of as I do them, as I practice and things like that. Things I want to play with. I'm gonna do 3D printing for quads. I'm probably going to 3D print my own eventually, so that'll be another series. But that's gonna be in a longer term, six eight months time frame. The first thing is to get this first set together, build it, practice with it, make sure I can actually do it and I'm not an idiot. And then we'll look into actually making my own and do more videos about stuff like that. So keep tuned for that if that's what you want to see. All right, I showed you guys the TMC 2100s. I got some of the small, these are eight millimeter bearings. These are the short ones. Uh, don't quote me on the name because it's not written on here. This is one of my Ally Express orders that took forever to come in. But I wanted to have some spares around of these smaller bearings, so I have these now. And I ordered in one of the clone E3D V6s for Monoprice Select Mini. Sadly, I don't know if you can tell that, but the fan is completely broken. So I'm going to contact the seller on Ally Express and see what they have to say if they will replace it or not. Uh, yeah, so this is for the Monoprice Select Mini. I'm excited to have this. I am working on finishing getting all the parts together. Sadly, the the new threaded rods that I ordered, I didn't order threaded rods, lead screws, sorry. So the lead screws that I ordered and the smooth rod has not arrived yet for the Monoprice Select Mini. So I am currently waiting for those to come in before I start any of my real mods to it because those are gonna be some of the first things that I modify. And once I get that X axis ripped apart, the X and Z, I need to have all my ducks in a row so that I can make sure I can do all the modifications in one video. I'm not doing all the modifications in one video, I'm doing all of the same axis mods in one video. So for the Z, there's a stabilization and a few other printed parts to go in there to help stabilize the Z. Two separate mods for that. Those are gonna go in there. Then I have mods for the X axis, so to steady the pulley, the actual extruder housing is gonna be swapped out and adding in the stabilizer for the x-axis, all of that is gonna be in one video because that is all x-axis modifications. And then we're gonna do y-axis modifications to replace all of the plastic parts with actual metal ones, all the pulley, all the threaded pulleys, uh, I shouldn't say threaded, all of the tooth pulleys are gonna be replaced. All of that is to come up eventually, but I have to wait for all these parts to come in and I'm just taking my time ordering them cheap and waiting for them to come in from China. And I'm sure if you guys watch my channel, you saw the video about the 1,000 subscriber giveaway. So Todd, congratulations. He did get back to me. So sorry all you guys hoping to be number two. Sorry about that. He got back to me. I've already shipped him a SD card. I actually went ahead and upped it to a 32 gig just because I could. Uh, the person that gave me money actually gave me more than enough. She wanted to give me a little bit of extra, but I said, you know what? I'm gonna use all that money up. So I upped it to a 32 gig micro SD card and shipped that to him and the Raspberry Pi sitting here on my table is gonna go out on Friday. And that's it for me jabbering on this one, guys. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video. I have a lot of work to get to. I was just traveling. So now that I'm back here in my lab, I can sit down and start working on content. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. Let me know down below. I'd love to hear from you. Lots of ways you can help support the channel. Biggest one down below is to subscribe. Next one over here is to hit me up on Patreon. Donate me a dollar more, I greatly appreciate it. Down below there's affiliate links for all kinds of different places. So wherever you do your shopping for your 3D printing gear or your everyday shopping, please update your bookmarks with those links below. Down below me are gonna be a couple videos. Go ahead and check those out. One's gonna be a playlist for my vlogs. The other one's gonna be another random video that I want you guys just to go ahead and check out. So again, thanks for watching guys. And as always, happy printing.